Our first two Ryzen CPU reviews highlighted performance of the chips with SMT disabled, a test that we came up with pre-release based on historical testing with Intel's hyperthreading. As stated in the original content and in some old Intel benchmarks of ours, hyperthreading hasn't always been a net positive. Overhead sometimes detracted from average FPS by a couple percent at times, and so we added SMT toggling to our Ryzen testing. But there's been non-stop demand to apply SMT zero and an overclock to the 1700 to show AMD in the best possible light. We're following up today on the audience request and we'll be walking through the results here. Before getting to that, this is brought to you by Thermaltake's Tower 900 enclosure, built like a display case for PC components. The Tower 900 can fit full custom water loops and orients the system to put all components on display like a showroom. Learn more at the link in the description below. This test is built around user requests, so keep that in mind going into the content. We are using the R7-1700, the CPU that we most praised out of the current lineup of R7 CPUs, as it does more or less outperform for the price, the 1800X, especially when overclocked, we're using that and we're showing it sort of in the best light by combining all of our auxiliary tests in the 1700 review. That includes SMT off and overclocking. So the two of them together now in a benchmark rather than just doing one or the other because there was a time limitation. So uh, we will be looking at that today. We're overclocking, we're turning off SMT and as a reminder from the 1700 review, we are increasing the memory clock with the overclocked 1700. That means that this is not a perfect A-B test. A perfect A-B test would be where we compared really just one or two things off and on, really one thing technically. But uh, the thing here is that the 1700, our model, was not capable of exceeding 2666 megahertz without overclocking the CPU itself or changing the reference clock or something like that. So that means our testing looks at the performance stock with a lower memory speed, 2666 versus the 2933 megahertz of the overclocked 1700 because that's what we were able to achieve. And as stated in the original 1700 review, the point was really to push it with the overclocking, not do an A-B test and see what is possible under better conditions. We are continuing that today, especially because that's what was largely requested by folks reading and viewing the content. Uh, so keep all of that in mind. We have three games tested with four states of the R7-1700 with another few games tested with three states of the R7-1700. The main games to look at are Battlefield 1, Watch Dogs 2, and Total War Warhammer, the last of which previously showed tremendous performance gains by disabling SMT on all Ryzen CPUs we've tested thus far. That's all three that exist. For full test methods, check the 1700 review, the article, and you can also check the new article linked in the description below. Between these two, you'll find most of the information that you need, if not all of it. Patrick Lathan ran these tests for GN and wrote the article, so be sure to check out his work as well in that link. Battlefield 1 had a minor increase from 135 FPS average overclocked and SMT enabled to 135.7 average FPS with SMT disabled and the overclock applied. With the stock R7-1700, we're looking at 129 FPS average as the base, and disabling SMT increased the average by about 2.6% in averages. Again, we're not looking at the lows yet. Overclocking increased it by about 4.7%, and doing both increased it by about 5.2%. Now, I'll point out that percentages are not always perfect for measurement because they can make things sound a lot bigger or smaller than they are in reality. At this point, comparing with them is sort of silly because the fact is, disabling SMT on the overclocked 1700 gained us less than one FPS average, which is within range of error. It's 0.7 FPS average gain for this particular benchmark because one, we're running it manually. It is not an automated benchmark. And two, Battlefield 1 has some unique behavior with data streaming as we've explained in previous content pieces. That said, the improvement in frame times is noteworthy. As we've stated several times in these Ryzen product reviews or studies, the difference demonstrated between the overclocked SMT1 and OC SMT0 is not visible insofar as user experience, but is certainly measurable and repeatable in terms of benchmarking and logging. Disabling SMT continues to prove beneficial for frame times in this title, and we'll see that to be a trend in a couple of the other games tested. The really interesting results came from Watch Dogs 2 and, as usual, Total War Warhammer. Watch Dogs 2 proved to be one of the most CPU intensive games in our graphic settings study for the game, where we looked at optimizing the settings within the game for different CPUs, the game also allowed the 1700 with SMT zero and overclocking to attain a relatively competitive 91.3 FPS average 
placing it above AMD's own 1800X and below Intel's aging stock i7-4790K. This performance is mostly notable when looking at the 1700's own results. Watch Dogs 2 didn't initially perform any better with SMT disabled, but when overclocked, disabling SMT performs a bit better, and jointly we're looking at about a 14.2% better performance than stock. That's with OC and SMT disabled, OC being at 4 GHz. Total War Warhammer, or Total Warhammer, is one of the games specifically cited by AMD as being in the process of optimization, and we're eagerly awaiting any patches given these results. We're seeing an 11% increase over SMT0 with no OC, 13.8% over a plain overclock, and a massive 29.2% increase in average FPS over the out-of-box stock 1700 with 2666 MHz memory. In terms of raw numbers, that's a jump from 120 to 155 FPS average when under the best conditions. But again, keep in mind that there's also a memory speed change as requested by viewers and readers in the previous content, though it's really not that responsible in this particular game for the gains seen. 154.7 FPS average places the 1700 just below the last gen i5-6600K in our tests, but if these fluctuations are any indication, there's some room for easy optimization by Creative Assembly. We'll be keeping a close eye on Total Warhammer in the near future, and hopefully it'll serve as an indication of just how much software changes can affect AMD's hardware performance when it comes to Ryzen and SMT optimization. We're now entering territory where we don't have SMT0 plus stock tests, but can still compare against the overclocked plus SMT tests. Time is limited here, and we don't have it, the huge team required to run infinite tests, as some folks seem to think we do. But the least impressive result on our bench was in Ashes of the Singularity with DirectX 12, which showed a minuscule, within range of error, decrease in performance over a plain overclock. Ideally, we'd see a significant performance decrease by disabling SMT, but no effect is a good start. You can look at our 1800X SMT 1 and 0 tests for some further information on how Ryzen behaves in this title. Note that this particular workload is intensive on the CPUs, so we'll need to defer to titles which achieve higher frame rates to better see the fluctuation. Metro, Last Light, and GTA both showed minor performance increases of 1 to 2 FPS in average, nothing for a real user to consider disabling SMT over. Dumping SMT continues to improve our frame times, as shown in previous tests, though those changes aren't always actually visible to the user, so again, not necessarily worth disabling SMT over. You're jumping between BIOS probably for nothing, for the most part. Charts for these are in the article below if you want more detail on Metro Last Light and GTA 5 specifically. We only performed one synthetic or render test here as this was primarily an issue with gaming performance. Not much point in looking at render performance. Cinebench isn't a real workload, so to speak, but it is an AMD favorite and somewhat a simulation of rendering and it takes the full advantage of AMD's new 8-core and 16-thread R7 CPUs. As such, multi-threaded scores are the relevant numbers here, not single-threaded. As we covered previously, our 1700 at 4 GHz with SMT enabled scored 1764 CB marks. This is significantly higher than Intel's stock i7-6900K, which is three times the price, by the way, as that CPU is responsible for scoring 1470.5 marks. Mileage may vary as the 4 GHz overclock wasn't stable in longer render tests, but 3.9 was, and the 6900K, to be fair, did score 1823 when it was similarly overclocked to about where its limit was. With SMT disabled, however, the 1700 scored 1252.5, that's an average number. Still impressive, but as expected, it's much lower than when allowed to render on all possible threads. Disabling SMT is limited in gains compared to a straight overclock, but is a more guaranteed gain. The 1800X is blown out of the water in price to performance by the 1700, as stated in the original 1700 review, and that is especially true when overclocking. As for disabling SMT and overclocking, those gains are limited across the board, except for Total War Warhammer, which seems a bit of a standout title. Watch Dogs 2 has some interesting results, but nothing worthy of longer discussion, which Total War certainly is. Disabling SMT and overclocking has limited gains in average FPS for the most part, though does show some more gains in a few games in the frame times, especially at the low end. So this isn't the 16 to 30% increase that some people were speculating in the comments. We're really not seeing anything close to that for the most part, except for Total War Warhammer, which is, again, somewhat of a standout title here. Overall, 
yeah, there's some performance improvement with overclocking and SMT disabled, but for the most part, you'll see the greatest gains by just doing one of them and then ideally leaving SMT on because just to kind of refresh everyone, the argument we've been making, uh, for the most part, we stand alongside the 1700 as a mixed workload CPU. It is fantastic in terms of doing things like rendering, Blender, Premiere, stuff like that. We've already gone through all that in that review. The 1800X at the price, uh, not so great for gaming in terms of value, it turns out. The 1700 is a lot more arguable in that way. And if you look at it from a mixed workload user standpoint, where maybe you're doing some content creation, streaming, alongside gaming, the 1700 is a pretty good choice. The thing here though, is that if you are getting to the point of disabling SMT and overclocking to get the best gaming performance, it sort of eliminates the entire purpose of that conclusion. Because again, the conclusion is built on the idea that the CPU is a good mixed workload performer. If you turn SMT off, you lose all of that. Suddenly it's worse than comparable Intel chips because you've killed half of the threads. And things like Blender, they don't care about whatever these games seem to care about when it comes to SMT on or off for performance. All they care about is more threads is better. So you see Blender rendering one tile for each thread. You have 16 tiles rendering. Obviously that's a lot faster than eight. Uh, so the argument basically becomes, well, why do you disable SMT? And the answer is because when you're benchmarking, you wanna look and see where's the potential headroom, where's the potential choke point, and what can we learn from that data? Uh, it does not mean in this case that you should disable SMT on a 1700 that you've purchased and use it for gaming because if you're doing that, again, value is not great and you kill the entire production argument. If you're doing production, take the hit to gaming performance and be happy with the production performance because the 1700, again, you overclock it, it's a good performer. It outdoes the 1800X in terms of price to performance by a long shot. It can equal the 1800X's performance if overclocked, assuming all overclocks can achieve the 3.8 to 4.0 gigahertz range on the 1700. We'll see that, how that works out as they continue to bin chips in the future. Uh, but hopefully that answers the question. So keep an eye out for more content. The 1080 Ti hybrid stuff is either online already, depending on when this video goes live, or will be shortly. Subscribe for that. Leave a comment below if you have further questions. Links in the description below, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.